I've only seen Mr. Bugliosi's side. Judge Older's on the death list. I'm on the death list. You know, we, we, we had bodyguards. At the height of the Manson trial, many rumors were flying around. Mr. Hughes. There was a disappearance so troubling. There was a sense, uh, what's next? Could you, in fact, try the case, do you think? Even 40 years later, it's a case the lead prosecutor and the lead investigator will never forget. In fact, to this day, in the Ventura County Sheriff's Office, the Hughes file is still an open file. November 30th, 1970, just before closing arguments, the attorney for Manson follower Leslie Van Houten went missing. It was uh, a stormy, stormy weekend. Charlie Rutt, former Ventura County Sheriff Sergeant, led the investigation into the disappearance of Ronald Hughes. With all the rumors flying around that the uh, Manson family had somehow killed this guy, it was a big case. The Manson family trial was Ronald Hughes' first big case. Rudd says the disheveled and overweight attorney often camped at Sespe Hot Springs above Ojai. The weekend before he was to present his closing arguments, Hughes hitched a ride with a neighbor to prepare his summation for the jury. He never returned. This was right before final summation. So he, uh, he doesn't come back to court and uh, the court uh, put the case in recess on a day-to-day -day basis, hoping that poor Hughes would show up one day and walk through the courtroom door, but he never did. Former District Attorney Vincent Bugliosi prosecuted the case. After the trial, Sandra Good, former member of the family, still a member of the family at the time, said that, quote, Ronald Hughes was the first of the retaliation murders. The implication being that the Manson family had murdered Hughes. Bugliosi wrote about it in Helter Skelter. About four years later, I got a call in my office from a former member of the family wanting to remain anonymous, and he flat out said the Manson family murdered Hughes. Rudd questioned those who last saw Hughes alive. They described a downpour so destructive, they abandoned their van and ran out of the canyon with only their backpacks. Rudd says Hughes, too out of shape to run, stayed behind. He later found the van that Hughes rode up in buried in mud and debris. These creeks, when they have flash floods up there in the area that they went to, a small stream can become a dangerous place in short order. But months passed and still no sign of Hughes. Then Rudd got a tip that the Manson family buried Hughes at Barker Ranch in Death Valley. So my partner and I went up there and uh, dug for two days. It was another false lead. We were unable to locate Mr. Hughes or any indication as to what might have happened to him. The trial went on. A new attorney was appointed, and the courtroom, says Bugliosi, became more bizarre by the day. We have one day that Manson uh, gets a hold of a sharp pencil, and from a standing position, he leaps over the counsel table and starts approaching the judge, and then he was immediately tackled and dragged out of court by the bailiffs, and he shouts out to the judge, in the name of Christian justice, uh, someone should chop off your head. And of course, the judge started carrying a 38 caliber revolver in his, in, in, uh, under his robe in court. I mean, th these are really, really bizarre things. Bugliosi began to suspect the worst. People have pointed out that after a trial, now and then, a defense attorney will be killed by the defendant. Why? He wasn't too happy with his representation. What is your relationship with Mr. Manson now? Well, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very friendly one. It always has been. We've uh, seen eye to eye on a great number of things. However, there are some problem areas. As the trial progressed, Hughes was becoming more and more independent of Charles Manson. Manson wanted what they call an umbrella defense. The whole focus is on saving Charles Manson. And Hughes properly was focusing in on his own client, uh, Leslie Van Houten, you follow? Manson did not like that. In an ironic twist, the same day the Manson family verdicts were read, Charlie Rudd got the break in the case he was waiting for. A couple of fishermen happened to be going upstream and, uh, and found the body. Ronald Hughes' body, still intact, with no sign of foul play, washed down the creek almost to Fillmore. The coroner listed the cause of death as undetermined. I was there at the autopsy, and um, I, I thought it was determined by the medical examiner that uh, he was going to go with drowning. Charlie Rudd spent hours in these foothills above Ojai investigating Ronald Hughes' death. 
He says in spite of the rumors of foul play, he remembers clearly after his investigation, he determined it was an accident. When the water comes down, it sweeps the debris and you along with it. And that's what happened to Hughes. But even the clear evidence of fast moving water will forever be muddied by Manson and the cold blooded killers who followed him. The Manson family was still on the loose. They were on the corner, Temple and Broadway, 24 hours a day. The Manson family liked to kill people. That was their religion, their credo. They would have killed as many people as they could. 40 years later, it remains a mystery these men will never forget. In Ojai, Stacy Butler, KCAL 9 News.